Welcome back to Get With The Programming. I'm Chase Ingram. I'm Captain America. And along with me is Bill Grundler. Wolverine. Sorry I was late, everyone. It's my bad. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Okay. I was going to say, you aren't saying anything, and now I'm panicking because I can't hear you. <laughs> I was like, can you, no. Can you hear me or no? I can hear you just fine. I'm okay, good, good. Hey, you, everybody. You, look at hi, the everybody. things Bill and I are wearing. Dude, okay. I, I want to show everybody, but I'm all mic'd up and stuff, and yeah. I got my mic going in the way. I don't even know if you can fucking see anything. Yeah. It's uh, it's our, some of our new gear. Dude, it's so More cool. new stuff. More new stuff. Who so excited would, about that. Whoever would have thought. Dude, I, I had this conversation yesterday with somebody. I was like, you know, when we first started the OG thing, it, it was we were looking for something to represent us and the brand, uh, not the brand, but like, we were just what, pissed, what, what, dude. what, what, what do we believe in? Like, where do we feel yeah, like, a, let's you go know, back. It's like, hey, make some shirts, guys. And I'm like, well, eh. with what our art, nobody, our logo on it. Nobody wants to get with the programming T-shirt. I mean, we had cool ideas for those that we never we came did. Out yeah, that's true. We did. They never we came out. But that's all right. We'll, we'll do it eventually. Maybe for like an anniversary <laughs> shirt. Right. <laughs> but I was like, no, I want to do something more fun. Something more representative of the way we feel about CrossFit in general. The whole thing. Not the games. Not gym. CrossFit. The thing that started it all. The thing that binds us all together. The thing that got us into it. Yeah. This and thing on my that, cup that thing on yeah, my that. hat that thing that thing the thing that someone's bouncing weights outside my gym right now that thing that, exactly that, that thing this thing and then the og thing came to be but at no point in time did i ever think it would turn into something like this but dude it is so fun it's so fun because this is this is this is along the lines of like how crossfit came to be there was no intention to create a movement it was just like hey let's just do this thing that works better because we figured it out like greg figured it out yeah and we saw that video did i, did I, I can't remember if we reposted it on our um the, the one with greg talking about fran oh i know dude it was so good and i was like that's it. so good that's it i mean it was, it so was great it was so just like innocently awesome and like self-discovery type stuff and you felt like you're part of this little group and uh this you felt like you were you felt like you were part of something special and all of these things that are coming up like you know going over all of the the uh the articles again yes it just dude it it lights that fire of what it felt like originally like back in the back when we started and it was cool so betty has up there uh about the cult shirt so i, I mean i wear mine all the time or i wear my hat or whatever we had a drop in yesterday uh two days ago that I, I mean i've never met her before and she came in and she's like dude we love taking pictures with the cult shirts we have that we have this whole yeah. thing her Instagram picture is her in the cult shirt. And I'm like, holy shit. Oh, no way. <laughs> it was so rad. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just such a cool mm -hmm. and, and, and talk, I mean, talk about tightening up the group. I mean, everyone, it used to be like, Oh, I saw your nanos or, you know, you'd see a name on the, the, the board on the, on the comments way back in the day. But like this, this piece now is that it's tightening up that group of, yeah, we're all part of the same. We're cut from the same stone, man. Yeah, so cool. It's very. It's cool. been awesome, and then the cult shirt's been great. And then we have these tribe ones that we're creating on the back of Bill's shirt. It has pukey on the back, and yeah, turn around and it says the cult within the culture around the clown, and and the, just the symbol by itself in a solo one. Like th this is, this is it. This is so, the, like uh, Stefan was saying, like the, it turned into a spark and it's now it's created, it's reignited the fire. We're not reinventing anything. No. We're just bringing things back. We're just centering ourselves when it comes to this. So it's been, it's been super cool. And obviously what Ken and Sherpa Works have done for us. And there's still so much things, so many other things that are coming. Dude, that um, guy, that guy has yeah. got the fire lit under him. Like he's so, I mean, he's coming out. I'm like, hey, hey, slow down. <laughs> Seriously, I'm like, ah, what? Do, I don't even, I'm not even sure exactly what we're doing or what we're happening. He's like, dude, I got this. We're going to go this way. We're going to do yeah. these. I'm like, whoa, 
freaking me out right now. Yeah, but like we, it, it, it started with the OG, but you guys have turned this into something beyond expectations, something beyond we could have ever imagined, and something that has reunited our passion to dive deeper into this cult culture, this OG culture. We even created an, an Instagram handle for this by itself. It's called the.og.culture. You guys can see it on the screen right now if you're watching on YouTube. We're working on a lot. There's 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 so much that we want to do that it would we just have to iron it out. We're like, now it's like, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's like <laughs> you know, but um, you know, we have this. So any like new things that are gonna get posted, like new new designs, new things like a pair like a fall lines coming i just got our long sleeve hoodie dude awesome. i cannot Seriously. wait for it to be in an appropriate temperature in texas so i can wear that i know it's always that in california after like seven o'clock at night <laughs> <laughs> true totally or before true. 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> but uh i can't wait right so if you guys haven't followed it yet go to the.og.culture on instagram we have other things coming to where this is now its own living breathing organism that is fueled by you guys so i just want to thank you guys for being a part of that thank you for turning this into what it is and we it's we're just scratching the surface yeah which i mean this whole thing turned into why we're doing this book club series on the crossfit journal what else yeah. can we do that's the way like what else can we do in the space to grow to support to build to rebuild to reinvigorate Get people back in the gym, back in the garage, both. I do both. If I don't have time to be at my gym, because sometimes my kids are home and I can't bring them to the gym, but like if they take a nap or sometimes they'll do it late at night or first thing in the morning, but damn, I want to get back in my gym as soon as I can. Well, yeah, the gym is, the gym is where the fun is, but that's not even where it started. It's just no. the fact of just wanting to get it done. Just go and do work. Doesn't have to be pretty. Doesn't have to be super shiny. Doesn't have to be the highest, most expensive equipment or the you know the most oiled piece of machinery. It's like just go do some work. Constantly varied functional movements done at high intensity. Go do it. Oh, yeah. Get it done. You're in. I always find it funny is like the gym is where the fun part is. And that's just really where my heart and soul is. But like the <laughs> cross, it started by leaving, <laughs> by leaving the gym, right? The traditional yeah. gym as we, as it still exists today in a sense. And you know, if, or just like go clang and bang and 24 hour it, fitness until you get kicked out. Just like we said in our second uh, article of the CrossFit journal series is, you know, what, what are the 10 things to you get do to get out. yourself kicked out of a gym? Well, it's the, uh, you know, we talk, we have been talking about growing this culture thing, the culture, it's the culture. It's not the gym. Mm -hmm. It's the culture. Like, cause when it was the gym, Greg was saying like, grab your neighbors, train them in your gym. That becomes your, you become the that. weird people Literally, when he cruising created around friend. the neighborhood doing stuff. When I, when I, it was really fun when, when I was doing this stuff in the very beginning, um, with my fire guys, mm -hmm. we would work out our fire station was in this neighborhood so we would do things around the block and dragging tires flipping tires walking around with barbells running doing all this crazy stuff that people would listen to and watch us do and that's how they knew us they would see us out and about and they're like hey you're those guys that are dragging the tire around the block right like my whole crew <laughs> would be out there with our radar. i'm like yeah that, that's us we were the that was our group but that's your community that's your culture that's your cult that's your tribe and that's where it started so yeah the gym is just a bigger broader version of that to as an extension to get that out to the rest of the world but the the culture part of the whole thing is it, it bring, man dude it brings everyone so close that's what's cool about it i love because no one is close in the regular gym you might have your training partners but like you're just it's not the same way yeah headphones on head down whatever no, doing your thigh spread machine <laughs> you know what i i liked about if you guys haven't seen it's a six and a half minute video on greg glassman talking about how fran came to be and it's awesome hey i threw up so i took it to my next door neighbor yeah and guess oh, what he okay. threw up <laughs> speaking of so someone asked us this question and you had sent this to me 
uh, Life is RX is coming out with the re coming out with their pukey shirt. Yeah. And someone asked this to me, which I said we would talk about on the next show, was where the pukey thing came from, which leads to what we we're just talking about, yep. and where that clown design first originated. So we'll go to pukey first. And this is a classic counterculture contrarian go fuck yourself, I'm going to work out attitude was, you know, Greg's like, oh, I puked on the floor. And then my, I went across the street and grabbed my buddy and then ran him through Fran. It's, they didn't call it Fran at the time. They just call it 2059 thrusters and right. <laughs> And then he did. And then we grabbed his brother. And then like he was very skeptical because we were all both covered in vomit, breathing hard and said, you got to try this. Which as a teenager or, or like early on, I was like, sure, absolutely. This looks horrible. Like, let's make some <laughs> bad decisions. Um, but the pukey thing came from, and especially the original logo. I'll see if I can find this. Was, was really is like everyone making fun of CrossFit, one. and he's like, "Cool, we'll just make it the mascot." Yeah, it was such a bad drawing of a clown throwing up into a bucket. That's funny. I'm looking at for the the article, like a photo, and the first article that comes up is why Pukey the clown isn't funny. I'm like, cool, breaking <laughs> muscle. <laughs> Uh, people cool, are okay. Guys. The the thing with that is people are so afraid to be uncomfortable. People are so afraid to push hard. If you're throwing up, it means it's bad. It's like no, okay, that's to the extreme. Yes, the object is not to have you throwing up. The thing is, is that you do that because your body is not used to doing that. It's not right. used to working at that intensity. Doing your ten, eight, six pyramid version of of curls is not going to make you throw up. Yeah, but if you do twenty one fifty nine thrusters and pull ups for the first time, you might. Yeah, and so people were making. And any fun of athlete that. knows that. Any athlete that is trained knows what it's like. like. Dude, I almost lost it on that one. They all know it. There it is. Yeah, Such a this little guy on the right. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, this is at the top of a lot of the CrossFit Journal articles. <laughs> yeah, that Along was with okay. His dog. When you did the, uh, remember I told you they had the 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 trophy. Uh, things if you did like these set uh, workouts, these benchmarky mm -hmm. things, you would send your name in with what you got, and they 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 told you that you would get this shirt, that shirt right. with that clown yes. on it, the good yes. one, the old the original one. Yeah, it's not great. the cool life is RX one. <laughs> yeah, and so that's where it all started. It's like fine, you think this is stupid and dangerous and irresponsible, then we will make it our mascot. There, that was the attitude. Now the. The other clown, let's see if I can find this. Now, this shirt came to be, when was that? Around 2011, 12, or 10? No, I think it was, it was later than that. It, it, was a, it was a handful of years because like they kind of started rebuilding them. And then, uh, remember when they had them hanging from... The big sculptures. I think there's a couple up at the. Up oh at the ranch yeah, right now. yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, there's one in Dave's ranch right now. Yeah. God, those things were cool. So uh, let me see if I can pull this up. So where this came from is there was a time where Glassman and his wife Kathy were divorced, and this company came in. It's this clown right here. Yep. This company came in called Anthos. And tried to buy out Kathy's stake in CrossFit, which at the time is 50-50. Mm -hmm. That's how some, you know, splitting of assets work. And what they tried to do was buy her half and then turn CrossFit into a franchised model company. And this shook the community you think we've had a lot of like what is it um world ending events in crossfit how about the time we almost literally lost the company for yeah. real for yeah. real and this was a real thing like there was there are there was youtube videos of the guys from anthos coming in and saying what they want to do and why they want to buy it and this all this fear is like if they were going to come in they're going to change everything they're going to dictate how you painted your walls sold equipment sold stuff sold supplements you pay a franchise fee you have to pay them for it they were going to ruin everything everything and then greg glassman comes in and basically spends and borrows every penny he can 
and buys out Kathy's stock or equity in the company and saves CrossFit, Bank nearly bankrupts himself to save it. And LifeRx comes out with this shirt and this clown you see on the back, if you guys are watching on YouTube, and on the front, awesome. It, it says un unviable. 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 And so they created this unviable shirt. And that's where it came from. Oh, there it is. Come on. Be a good picture. Oh, gosh, Pinterest. I don't want this. I just want the damn shirt. <laughs> Anyways. So on the front, it just said unviable. Meaning you can't just buy us. Right? You can't just take Unf everything... Un Unfuckwithable. Yeah. And so that's where this design and logos you see that are coming from is this attitude of like, you can't buy us. We are not for sale. Right? And, and Greg did that. Greg and some investors came together at the like zero hour and bought it out and saved CrossFit from becoming a franchise F45 bullshit orange theory model because that's what was going to happen yeah it, like it was going to happen we were we everyone is in panic mode of, of, the, of this anthos coming and greg came in bought her out and then life rx came out this unbuyable t-shirt i still got one in my drawer i got one i love it yeah so that's where all this is stemming from oh and then the company tried to tell greg that that could not be you cannot have a clown as your logo or as oh, your right. yeah. as your icon. He's like, well, fuck you. Now we're definitely going to have it. Right. Like, that was, that like, was the way I that he always what? worked. If he says you can't do it, he's like, all right, watch me. Yeah. Every single time. Every <laughs> yeah. single time. And so now, I mean, you talk about a rally call. Like, that's exactly mm -hmm. what that image of that clown is. It's all of the stuff that people thought it's too bad. It's too hard. It's harmful. It's disgusting. It's exclusionary. It's uh, not businesslike. It's not pretty. It's not, you know, uh, aesthetic. It's not all of these things. You take the thing that, I mean, and we have all the people that are in the comics talking about how scared they are of clowns. Yeah, no kidding. So everyone's afraid of that. And here it is. Yoked yeah. as fuck. All <laughs> jacked up. Clown hat. My, like my daughter, I, was, I put in the comments, my daughter... Every time I wear all, the, I have all these clown shirts now that it's like, you see the logo and she's like, every time she's like, I see you over there. I don't mm -hmm. like you. She does not like clowns. Not a, not a fan. There's, but, oh, um, dude, my chat, my comments aren't loading. There's know, people talking about clowns. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hopping in the other side cause I got two screens open, but I don't know why it's not Dang coming it. up. I'm afraid to refresh. Cause the last time I did it, I got kicked out permanently for the rest of the show. It's okay. I'll, I'll hang out on there. All right. Bill's going to watch your comments. I, think, I can't see any of it. I think Sorry, you can still gang. post your stuff if you want to post a link, and it should be okay, though. Yeah. But I got everybody on there. We're good. Okay, cool. You talk We're good. good. Bill's going to manage it. the comment section. I can't put them up. I'm sorry. They're not loading, and I'm afraid to hit refresh because I don't know if you guys were here the last time I did that, but it kicked me out of the room, <laughs> and I had to leave Bill by himself talking about whatever for an hour alone. So we're going to stay here with you. Um, before we get to the CrossFit Journal article, now we have two for you guys. Now we did something we went a little out of order based on the list, okay? So if you guys go into the description on our YouTube channel, we have both articles posted for you guys. If you guys want to follow along with the Glassman Chipper setup with us, we're going through every article on the CrossFit Journal of the Glassman Chipper. Just put that in the comment comments there. Hopefully you guys got that. It came through. Uh, maybe I can't see what you're posting. But as we're doing this, oh, Let's see what's going on here. Anyways, as we're doing this, we are following the list. Now, today we have one article called the glycemic index. And what this is really going to go through is really what, what spikes or, or basically what is the, the baseline issue for a lot of chronic disease. And a lot of that has to do with regulating blood sugar um, and what spikes that or what keeps that regular. We decided to scroll down a couple to fast food because it also has a little correlation here in today's article. So we're going to do the glyce glycemic index first and then a one on fast food second, which 
the fast food one i think is it's like this the row of sub minute 7k article where it's like that's the title but the underlying thing the lesson there was awesome yeah totally and it had nothing to do with rowing a seven minute 5k Right. <laughs> right. And so the fast food one is fascinating because like we were like, okay, I can assume it's just a negative look on that. Yes. But the big underlying thing is breaking a stigma or an yeah. assumption about fast food versus eating healthy. Yeah. And it's the and assumption the, part, which is massive. Yeah. Massive. Because it's massive. a massive so, assumption. So I'm, I'm really excited about these. Um, but before we get into it, I want to thank our partners of the show, Bubs Naturals. Go to bubsnaturals.com. Use the code GETWITH20. For 20% off, 10% of all their profits go to a military foundation of their choosing. Obviously, Bubs Naturals has the MCT oil powder for that morning coffee. They have the collagen protein that goes directly into that. That's 20 grams of protein. The MCT oil powder helps with brain function, gut health, my focus, and my satiation. I think I said it right. Satiation. Is it like when I just this is my favorite thing to do in the morning, whether I'm coaching or I'm just sitting there up early doing some work, studying for the podcast and things like that. I have to have this in the morning. So you guys make sure you go to bubsnaturals.com. Use that code get with 20 for 20% off. Also, the apple apple cider vinegar gummies. It's my sweet treat in the morning, and I double dip and I do one in the afternoons. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I have to. They're too good. And I'm trying to stay away from sweets. <laughs> So I, you know, I have something that's sweet, but yet it's very good for my gut health and overall health. So I want to thank Bubs Naturals for that, as well as Element 26. Go to element26.co. Use the code GETWITH15 for 15% off all things on the website, especially for your U.S. orders. You guys can see on the website right now is that new belt. It's that hybrid leather Velcro one without the button buckle clip things that, like I said, crap crack that floating rib <laughs> i think it's, it's burly looking look at that it is it's so great it's so great and they have a lot of new products on there they're new hand grips that is that hybrid grip where it has the tackiness but you can also use chalk depending on the pull-up bar that you're using they have a lot of flexibility and bend with them and i think it's the best grips out on the market today so let's get into our first series here Pull this up. Uh, okay, I go window. Oh, I got to open them. I always I'm gonna share my entire screen. I don't want to do that. Is that it? There we go. Nope. I'll get there. All right, so we'll start with the glycemic index one. Share that. There we go. Got it? Yes. All right. Now, I'm going to see if I can blow this up a little bit. That's good. Can I make that bigger? Hold on. How's that? Okay. Is that bigger? Uh, that's good like that. Like that. All that's right. Good. Uh, uh, again, this is written by Greg Glassman in November of 2002. Now, before we get into this, when we're talking about nutrition or, you know, this isn't necessarily a nutrition talk. And so I think a lot of people, they get very religious when they talk about <laughs> nutrition. As always, this baseline discussion is on a prescription of health fitness, not competition or sport. So we talk about basic, basic training methodology, simple ways of nutrition, right? Eat meats, fruits, nuts, and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. You should do that if you are just a person looking to get in shape, to stay healthy, to push themselves along that curve of sickness, wellness, and fitness. To be the best this, version of you now and yeah. for a long period of time. Not about... I think I'm an athlete and I need to increase my macros and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I, you, you need carbs because I work out three hours a day and burn all these. It's like, that's not what we're talking about. Right. We're talking about saving the fucking world. That's what we're talking about. So before we get into this, a lot of discussion of, say, issue of health and fitness right now, I know... Uh, over the last couple of years, it's been this COVID thing that's killing everybody. 
But really, what no one is talking about to hedge against this, i.e. fitness, even more so nutrition, because the biggest killer, ready for this, is chronic disease. Now, chronic disease is linked directly to the baseline principle of here of the glycemic index, and we'll get into that. But chronic disease kills, ready for this number, 41, not 1,000, million people globally a year. 41 million people die of chronic disease every year. And a lot of that is hypertension, heart attacks, diabetes. There's a, a long list of chronic disease. And most chronic disease can be buffered against or reversed with good nutrition and physical activity. There's a prescription. There's a saving, saving grace, lifeboat right here. Here's the lifeboat. But Greg said not everybody wants to get on it. Nope. We're just offering it to you. 41 million people every year die of chronic disease. Think about that. 41 million people annually, not over the last 20 years, annually. And it can be hedged against and often reversed by eating well and working out. That's the facts. And so when we look at the glycemic index, and there's going to be some things in here that show you what the precursors are and how people get to this position of chronic disease. So that's a big part of this article. All right, let's get things started. As we look at this, we say a lot of things in red are like big red flags, important too. The yellow is things you need to know. Blue are big keywords. The things I have in green here, we did that for um, our garage gym one. These are books or, or articles you can, you can read. So those are site sourced. We start things off on the glycemic index written by Greg Glassman 20 years ago. For several decades now, and this was several decades ago, so now we're right. <laughs> double- right. Double what? Several, several. Yeah. Think of it. This is 20 years ago, and this is what he's already saying. For several decades now, bad science and bad politics have joined hands to produce what is arguably the most costly error in the history of science, a low-fat diet. This fat diet has cost millions, un cost millions of unnecessary deaths and suffering from heart disease, diabetes, and it is increasingly seems a host of cancers and other chronic debilitating illness. He said this 20 years ago. And it has only gotten worse. Why is COVID so bad? Why is it wreaking havoc on people's health? Why is it killing people? Because they are so far on the continuum to sick that they have no buffer against it. And we're not, we're not talking about like the exception. There's exceptions to anything. We are talking about the statistical majority. Our people are overweight, out of shape, that are already sick. And when they get hit with this, or any other disease for that matter, it just kills them because they have no buffer against it. And it's because of this is a huge, right? Over 30% of the United States population is obese overweight. No wonder this thing is ravaging through society. And the numbers look like, oh my God, this is it's just like, if this happened 50 years ago, right? If it, during the, what the, what we said 60 years ago with our, our Lee Valley high school, uh, and I, I can't remember what it is that, that we showed you, right? Right. Non-starter, non-conversation, nothing. It's nothing. But now, in the sea of chronic disease that is our basic general population, yeah, it's a big deal now. But it's conflating the issue. And something that I think that – and I actually got into this, this discussion with, uh, with my girlfriend talking about – just about health, trying to, trying to be healthy. The best you can do is try to be as clean as you possibly can. Like, I, I, like the soils are different now. The the things that are put into everything. I mean, whether you're, you know, hormones in certain meats or pesticides on certain vegetables, and and the things that are leaching into the soil. Like, there's a lot of bad things that are going on. But the 
the more you are conscious about what you're eating, you can't just allow yourself to be lazy about it. If you are lazy, it's not like it's not like when you used to like when we used to drink Coke or Pepsi like way back in the day. Like you like the Coke now versus a Coke then, totally different effect on your body. Well, and you, so, you mean the one that had cocaine in it? <laughs> well, no, I, I'm the not that Coke. old. I'm not that old, dude. Come on now. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, what I mean is it like you know even if you talk about that high school, you know they were eating back in the back then. Like there was a lot of you know steak and potatoes, and and you had bread, and you had you had things that like now you, you think like how how could people eat such such bad things and they didn't like as a as a as a population did mm -hmm. not look the same way that we do now with all of the information with all of the conveniences with all of the sciences with all of the everything we are in a worse place now because we are just not you know because you have one sprig of broccoli on your plate doesn't mean that you're eating vegetables kind of a thing you know yeah so you can't afford to be lazy on what it is that you're reading. You're not going to be able to get it perfect because I just don't think unless you raise and grow your own stuff and you're like off the grid kind of a thing, it's going to be really hard to do um, to be really, really clean. But um, the idea, especially with this glycemic index is, okay, you need to be thinking, be as smart as you can. Yeah. Do the best you can with, with, uh, with the op. Cause everyone's going to say it's too expensive to eat healthy. Oh, just wait for the next article. I uh, know. I'm I'm I'm, help, I'm, I'm helping. A little springboards, yeah, a little, little springboard. A little foreshadowing. Right. I saw I saw time in the comments. Oh, time. Uh, yeah. Yep. Don't yep. worry. Yep. Don't worry. All right. So as we work further down this, we have a new age is dawning in nutrition. One where the culprit is seen not as dietary fat, but as excess consumption of carbohydrate, particularly refined or processed carbohydrate. And here's what I have in blue. Excess carbohydrates play a dominant role in chronic disease. Excess carbohydrates play a dominant role in chronic disease, such as obesity, coronary heart disease, many cancers, and diabetes. Now, when we speak diabetes, we're speaking specifically to type 2 diabetes, not right. type 1. Type 1, crapshoot, nothing you can do about that. There, I mean, I can't even put in like exactly a pigeonhole of who is susceptible to what obviously there's some genetic susceptibility, but it's just, that's, that's the one that's irreversible and that just people get, we're talking about type two. You, you put yourself in a position to become, which will hit here insulin sensitive or high, you know, hyperinsulin, right? Uh, hyperinsulinemia type two is also reversible by a, a good diet and exercise. Not perfect diet. Here's the other thing that I think people get so freaking stressed out about. It's not about being perfect. It's not just being a little bit better. It's not about working out five to six times a week for two hours. It's like three or two or one if you're just sitting on the couch and eating crap. Just like do a better breakfast and go for a walk twice. We're already going the right direction. And I think people get frustrated because – Listen, the nutrition thing is hard. It's hard, but it's the baseline of the pyramid for a reason. It is the secret. It is, it is the silver bullet. That, it, it, that is it. It isn't a matter of opinion. That is it. We just showed you what the, the negative is for the diet. Chronic disease. Obesity, coronary heart disease. Many cancers and diabetes. There's a lot of cancers that feed exclusively on the sugar that you put in your body. You grow it. You also okay, grow with inactivity. Most of them are, that way. Most most of them are activity. Them. Yeah. You know what That's helps stave off those? Active. Being active actually helps blunt or shrink cancer cells. But I, like that's beyond my scope of speaking too. I just, you know. All right. <laughs> now, on top of that, near universal perception still to this day, this was 20 years ago, still to this day, is that dietary fat is the major culprit in obesity. And there's no scientific foundation on that. Zero. Fat is the culprit. No, it's not. Fat does not make you fat. Sugar makes you fat. Inactivity makes you fat. 
Now, all, if all you ate was a steady diet of like government cheese and, and macadamia nuts, probably not the best thing for you, especially if you're inactive, right? Yes, a high excess in fat consumption and only that in inactivity can do things negatively for you, but it's still not as bad as sugar and high refined carbohydrates. And they scroll up here, there's some tools. There's some uh, literature on here and it's great. Like all these things are still great. Barry Sears, Enter the Zone, Protein Powder by Mary Dane Edis, Dr. Atkins, Diet Revolution. I mean, you heard of the Atkins diet, right? That's mm -hmm. taking out basically all carbs. It's the, the, the original keto, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> the Diet Revolution, the Paleo Diet, the Carbohydrate Addicts Diet. These are all tool, tools, books, and articles that you guys can look and research that are still valuable today, even though this is 20 years ago. And it says each of this is an honest and accurate chronicling of the effects of how low fat, fad diet, and each offers a rational, effective regimen to avoid these dietary traps. Like it's there and it still functions. And I, and I know paleo diet was huge. And I like when we first started across it, it was like that was five way. days a week, billabong board shorts, Chuck Taylor's. <laughs> And the paleo <laughs> diet. <laughs> Maybe a mohawk. Uh, shit, and a that, was total, that was totally me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had my Adidas trail running shoes. Uh, <laughs> right. Or my chucks. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it was. <laughs> right. But these still stand the test of time. Now, the big thing here is access carbohydrates cause a disease state called hyperinsulinemia which is the chronic and acute elevation of insulin as a result of habitual consumption of excess carbohydrates. Now, what that means is when you eat food, your body breaks it down into basically like energy. And a lot of that is stored as like blood sugar. Right? When you eat foods that are really high in basically like refined carbohydrates or sugar, it shoots your insulin levels up in your body, right? Insulin is that it's like a... <sighs> This is oversimplification. So if you dietitians are out there, just shut the fuck up for a second. <laughs> it basically takes nutrients and puts them in other places of the body, right? Insulin is the way muscles can receive, say, like food and energy. Like it's the carrier. There's receptors in all of your body parts that ins insulin is the, like the, basically the, the carrier. But if you come hyperinsulinemia blocks those receptors so you can't, do that anymore your body can't regulate your blood sugar and if your insulin spikes too much like you die <laughs> or too low right there's that is that it doesn't work anymore it's not you basically screw up this entire system very 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 oversimplification is that too oversimplified no oh, i gosh, think right. i think that's that's yeah. good that's good <laughs> Right. And now the, the big part of that is the evidence link linking excess carbohydrate consumption to hyperinsulinemia and coronary heart disease in compelling, if not overwhelmingly convincing, yet we're still not doing it. And the excess cons consumption of carbohydrate may soon be shown to be linked to Alzheimer's, aging cancers, and other diseases through a process called glycosylation. Now I try to look this up and I did my best. I'm not going to try to dive into this too much, but basically it's the process of like in your brain, you have all of these like sensors and that are, are feed off protein, right? But when you disrupt that system, especially with hyperinsulinemia where they can't get those things, right? You disrupt the ability to basically like feed these cells in your brain and which starts to increase the poten potential of Alzheimer's, right? That's when things start to deteriorate in your brain. So if you can't feed these proteins through this process of hyperinsulinemia and this, like that's where the disruption begins, right? Also, for as far as Alzheimer's, which is just another one of those things that it's, it's a crapshoot like cancer or type 1 diabetes, fitness will help stave that off at a minimum. An hour of activity, regardless of what it is, really, obviously, the more intensity, the better appropriately applied, just like we've said for anything, cues so many different things in your brain to strengthen those cells, to offset the de deterioration of them just by working out, let alone a good diet. 
So it's a combo, a combo. The disease brought about through hyperinsulinemia can easily be avoided by minimizing carbohydrate consumption, specifically carbohydrate that gives substantial rise to blood sugar and consequently insulin levels. And that's where we talk about the glycemic index. The glycemic index is simply a measure of the food's pro propensity, propensity, propensity. God, I told you I hate reading. Glycemic index is simply a measure of the food's propensity to raise blood sugar and avoid high glycemic index foods. And you'll avoid many, if not most of the ills associated with the diet. So basically the glycemic index is a categoric, categorically number of what this food will do to your your blood sugar. That's the index, right? What's more, what's less. That's as simple as it can get. Right? Right. Whoops. <clears throat> All right. Now, as you scroll down, what they did here, right? This is only a two pager is they have categories, good foods, which they claim is low glycemic and bad foods. And I put bad in quotations, which is high glycemic. Keep in mind generalities. Right. Keep in mind exceptions to the rule. And don't be like, well, I see rice on there, motherfucker. Like you're <laughs> wrong. I'm like, okay, like it was. It's just like this one has a higher spike. We're not, we're not quote saying it's bad. This is just the list that was curated 20 years ago. Right? Now, when we look at this list and we have things here on the list, high glycemic foods, quote bad foods, and low glycemic foods, which is quote good foods. This is the rationale behind the CrossFit sh shopping list at the right. All right. So in this article, which we've put in the description here for our YouTube page, and we message out to all our Patreon supporters, is a list of things like low glycemic on the left, high glycemic on the right. Now, when we say bad foods, there's foods in here that people will be surprised to see, quote, as bad, right? You see sweet potatoes on here. You see regular potatoes. You see fruits, bananas, cranberries, dates, mangoes, bananas. papaya. Yeah. Bananas are terrible. Banana. How dare you? How dare you eat a How banana? How dare you? And it's simple things, right? These have a high glycemic index, meaning if you can avoid having a steady diet of mangoes versus, say, broccoli, probably better. There's, you know, there's, that's just the way it works. Right. And so for an example, this is what blew my mind at my level one. Pat Sherwood was giving the nutrition lecture. I knew nothing of nutrition. I was a swimmer. Our diet and swimming. You guys ate everything. Cons yes. Consisted everything. of all it was, was get as many calories in your body as you can. It doesn't matter where they come from. That is what we were told. And the reason is, is that we burn based off how we trained in college, 10 to 12,000 calories a day a day. And we had to offset that with just calories. So if the term carbo load, <laughs> uh, carbo load before swim meets, we would go to like all you can eat Italian buffets and eat all the pasta, all the bread possible for this meat coming up. Now it's funny is like, I would prescribe that maybe who someone is going into like a two week training camp because you're going to be training four to five hours a day in the water, another two to three hours a day out of the water, six to seven days a week for two weeks straight. Like you can't sustain that with a low calorie diet, but not a freaking meat. I'm going to swim like two times. Right. <laughs> Nobody told us that. They had us carbo loading as if we're about to do the Iron Man the next day. I was swimming the 200 twice, which still sucked, but still. I was a wrestler. I didn't even care. I just cared how much it weighed. Exactly. I didn't care how many calories were in it. It was just like, how heavy is it? Yeah. That's all I cared about. That's, that was our nutritional program. And, you know, it's, it's not funny. It's sad now that I think about it, but I, I experienced this myself is that most of the time, either swimmers in high school, like who, who really did it, right? Or, or in college, they got fat really quick. Dude, really? The second they were done, like that is, I can almost always tell a swimmer by what they look like in their season. Like if I, even if I didn't know like, Oh yeah, here was me like in high school or here was me, you know, in college. And then you, you see another picture of them like three years later, or whatever. It's like, okay, you thought you could eat the same way. You were right. so used to eating 
anything and everything that got put in your face, but now you're not burning any calories. Or or right. they go from, I was a high end, ten thousand to twelve thousand calorie burner a day, to well I I, I work out, I work yeah. out once a, I, I work out an you know hour a day, so I can still eat the same amount, right? No, right. you can't. But no, think about this. Not you shouldn't even be eating half. If I no. eat half. <laughs> I'm eating five to 6,000 calories a day. Half of the food I've been consuming on a daily basis for the last decade. And I gained 30 pounds in two months. Damn. Because I wasn't working out anymore, or I was working out a little bit, but I was still eating the same way I've been like eating for a decade. Yeah. And I went from 170 in my last swimming to 200 pounds. And you wouldn't, there's no way, months. there's no way you would even know to think anything different. For, right. for years, it was like you ate whatever and right. you always were. I mean, that's why swimmers look the way they look. Right. But like you in know? college, I'm 170. I have 4% body fat with a resting heart rate of 32. Yeah. But I'm eating cookies and pasta and cereal. And I would drink a gallon of milk a day. Actually, I would drink almost. I would, I would almost drink two. That's how much milk I drink in college. Cereal, pizza, waffles bacon <laughs> we had this uh, I, I think i've told the story before but I, I took a health class it's like hey write down what your daily calorie intake is and i i did it all and wrote it up and typed it out and it's, it was just north of ten thousand calories and yeah. she failed me she's like this is not real I'm like, this is why would i lie about this right this is what i eat and then they did this i think it was during beijing where they did this michael phelps's diet yeah clip and he showed him like you see I, <laughs> I told, told you, you. <laughs> I told you. And you also at that point, I mean, being that you were active your whole life, you had yeah. a body that could process that stuff a lot. It was a machine. Better. It was a furnace. I mean, I, it, I was the same way. I could eat McDonald's three times a day, five cheeseburgers, large fries, supersized goat three times a day. And yeah. I was shredded, yeah. shredded. It didn't matter. Like your when your metabolism, you're, when you're young and like that definitely helps out. But the problem is, is like, as you get older, one, you aren't able to process the stuff as much. And you, we get older and we start thinking, you know, I should be able to enjoy the finer things in life. I should be able to have, you know, whatever the bananas, the, the cranberries, the whatever, whatever's on that bad list of, of things. But now your body is working twice as hard or, de or is half as strong to be able to even handle this stuff. Yeah. So it's, man, it's, it's really crazy. The older, the older we get and this is something that I talk to masters athletes a lot about is you can't be, uh, less concerned. You have to be more concerned about what you're taking in. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, uh, I see this comment by Travis and Vindicate about the only lifters and what they eat. I have all, I don't, don't even get me started on that. Right. That only lifter sitting between left is like, they have a bag of, uh gummy bears and they're just like oh it's for my next lift i'm like what the fuck right. are you doing right now we don't want to get into that um but yeah that's just what it was i can't even imagine eating that much food now all right but so so here's <laughs> the list right you have the good you got the bad the good foods typically like meats vegetables fruits nuts and seeds oh where have i heard that before interesting the bad man-made processed foods now how do i look at this in the bad food, starchy, sweet, processed, such as bread, pasta. Now it says rice, potato, grains, and desserts. Now everyone's going to get hung up on the rice, potatoes, and grains. We're talking about good versus better versus bad. Is it going to be terrible for you to have like chicken breasts with a plate of rice and a half avocado? No, it's great. <laughs> it's great. I'm not saying don't do that. Stop getting hung up on all this stuff. You guys are missing the picture. Oh, the Pat Sherwood story. Sorry. So I'm sitting there, and he's like, all right, here, here's a typical breakfast. And, he's, and he, he goes, you wake up in the morning, you make yourself some oatmeal. I'm like, yep, I do that every morning. Have yourself a glass of orange juice and a banana. I'm like, wow, how do you know what I eat for breakfast three to four times a week? And he looks at the board, he goes, sugar, sugar, sugar. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> sugar in terms of its glycemic index its effect on your blood sugar in the body it's just science if i eat a banana 
it spikes my blood sugar more than say me having a almonds. yeah almonds but like even put it in like a fruit category like these have here like an orange yeah or a pear or blueberries or strawberries right it's on if i have a mango there's a reason why mangoes are delicious but they also spike it more i'm not saying don't eat a mango but if I ate a mango every morning along with my oatmeal, which the oats and the oatmeal spike my blood sugar more than, say, any type of other thing I could have in the morning that has a less impact on that. That's, that's all it is. And, and orange juice, is a, it's a glass of sugar. I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. Right. It just And I was like, wow, no wonder I can't shake this last couple of percentages. And I was like, I, I was eating that every day, and it blew my mind. He's like, but... Bacon, eggs, and a slice of avocado. I'm like, oh, I can. But I thought fat was bad. It's really what I was thinking. <laughs> like, they t- like they, remember the wave of like eggs? Eggs are bad. Bacon is bad. All these fats oh, yeah. are all, bad. All, fat, fat, fat. all those, all that cholesterol in the eggs are terrible yeah, for you. You can't eat that many you. eggs. It's going to be bad. You're going to have heart heart attacks and arthro, arthrosclerosis and yep. plaque. No. Yeah. Right. And so that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at like good versus evil. We're just looking at better options, better options. But that's what the glycemic list is for here. Now, when you go to the grocery store, low glycemic foods have a limited shelf life and are found in the perimeter of the grocery store. You guys think about that the next time you walk in there. You're like, okay, I walk in and all I see is, oh, I I see the, the fruit vegetable aisle over to the right, which goes to the meat market, which goes to the milks and the yogurts. And, right? and then everything in the middle aisles comes in boxes that you have to open a really hard plastic bag with that can last for the next t- 10 to 12 years. <laughs> Good, healthy food should not last long. It shouldn't last long in your body. And they don't. They get used really quickly. But food that is designed to last a long time probably doesn't break down too well inside of your body, just as it doesn't outside of your body. And that's where you see the high glycemic foods, longer shelf life, typically found in the middle store aisles. And the whole point of this is that if you constantly eat foods that are here on the right, right, it doesn't, like these are just what it does. If you're constantly over here on the right, honey, jelly, sugar, maple syrup, teriyaki sauce, right? You put this like, hazelnut cream in your coffee every morning with 26 grams of sugar in every ounce that you put in there as opposed to Bub's Naturals. Shout out to Bub's Naturals. <laughs> <laughs> if you constantly live over here on the right, you are constantly putting your body in a position of blood sugar spikes, which will wear on the system. Wear on the system. Now, through this approach is that and it has in blue, which is what I want to put here at the end, important as we come to the end here for this one. This approach is an oversimplification of much of nutritional science. It has the power to deliver nearly all of the benefits offered by a more detailed and elaborate regimen, which is in all of those books that we cited earlier. And it says many of our friends and clients have radically transformed their health through this single tool, keeping it simple. A steady fitness regimen of three to five times a week for an hour at relative intensity. And a general diet of eat meats, vegetables, nuts and seeds, low starch, or some fruit, little starch, no sugar. The physical health gains you're going to get from that is so great that people think it's fake. That's how it can't possibly. It's like, yes, it can. And it does because we have the empirical evidence here. We've done the work in the gyms with our clients, with our family members. It works. It helps reverse and stave off chronic disease. It helps reverse a trend of 41 million deaths annually. It does this. We've proven that. And the amount we've proven that over the last 20 years of which this was written is 200 times fold of when this article came out. And what's crazy is that you know we think of CrossFit all the time as – the workout program, the stuff that Greg did, the Fran, the, the, the Helen, the Karen, the Murph, all of those things. We, we think of that all the time, but while Greg was designing this whole deal, using this as his foundation, 
this is what this is like really where the split between CrossFit, i.e. the games and CrossFit, the methodology and the fitness program went where Greg kind of started splitting with the program. And granted, he kind of went off the rails a little bit with it. But what I like that he did was he realized this one piece, this one tiny ass little article, this was the precipice of all the stuff he did when he started attacking big sugar, big soda, uh, all of the, all of the, you know, which is getting him now into the bad sciences stuff. And all of that yep. stuff was the same thing that was the USDA pyramid and how that was not for us. That was money and lobbying and governments and politics and all of that stuff so that there could be these, you know, a joint a, um, joining uh, agreements between insurance companies and big pharma and food subsidizing companies and all of that stuff. It was all of this money that was going that one way. And he, from this one article, from this one, hey, I think I need to tell you a simple way to, to stay healthy. And that's all it was. It wasn't a, this is how everyone should eat. Otherwise, you're going to get X, Y, and Z. It was Here's a general prescription that if you do this most of the time, you are going to be way more healthy than the vast majority of the people that are out there and the, the, the normal public that's out there. And again, putting you on that, that continuum from sickness to wellness to fitness. Yeah. You want it, we want to be between wellness and fit. And that's where we want to be. We don't want to be at well. Because there's like you only have one way to go, and that's towards sickness. It, we want to have wellness to be able to buffer that. So, a very easy general prescription. Because I mean, when you talk to anyone about eating a particular way, it's too hard. I have to measure things. I have to weigh this. You know, I have to. I I, I can't eat chicken and broccoli every single day. It just doesn't <laughs> taste the same. Or I, whatever the whatever the situation is. And I know that there are going to be. You know, we have people in here that don't eat meat. Fine, but generally Fine. speaking, here's what you do. You eat this way. You eat as unprocessed stuff as you possibly can, as healthy stuff, whole stuff as you possibly can, and you're going to be on the plus side of the board rather than at neutral or the negative. So I, I, that one, it's a two-page article that launched him into the direction where he is now, which is attacking bad science, Yep, which is really cool. Which is the the new big movement <clears throat> yeah. for Greg, Greg, which I'm I'm excited about. Yeah, couple traps to not get uh, fooled by. I saw this came up and I was I I googled it because I didn't know the answer. The the um the false security of gluten free. Oh God, yeah. I like hey gluten free bread. It's like glycemic index of ninety, high. <laughs> Dude, okay, so check this out. What's, what's well, the my thing gluten free right? pancakes and my sugar free maple syrup. I'm like, just listen to what came out of your mouth. Uh, me, so me and Laura went, it was her birthday yesterday. So we went down, oh, we took a little birthday. trip. Yeah, it was awesome. We uh, yeah. took a little trip down to go surfing. Um, about like two hours from here, got warm water. It was amazing. But she got a bunch of like snacks as we were, as we were on our two hour drive. And one of the ones, mm. one of the things she got was uh, this licorice. They were like these little licorice chews. Oh, and nice. Dude, they tasted so good. And on the top, it was like non-GMO, plant-based, vegan, you know, vegan, all that stuff. Gluten she flipped free. it over and it was like 11 grams of sugar, 22 grams of carbohydrates per four little chews. Dude. She looked at it, she's like, ah, what oh my doing? God. What the heck is this? I thought it was like gonna be all good. And that's again, that's the game is yep. to get organic and you know, non-GMO, plant, all of these things are logos and ways to get you to buy that thinking that it's going to be healthy yep. so it's really hard you, like those things really almost don't even matter it's you got to look at the stuff on the back unless yes. you know where it came from you know there were some there were some talks in here about uh you know yolks being bad with the chickens and all that kind of stuff like we have one of our members that has like 60 chickens she brings in eggs that like my members buy like 350 a dozen yeah. for pure like Grass, uh, cage free. Oh, I think my comments came. Nothing out. out, nothing out around. Oh yeah, they did pop back up. Yes. Um, and dude, and those eggs are amazing. Yes. Amazing. Uh, Jules brings those every once in a while. I can't remember some one of her family members. It's awesome. Here's the thing: is like gluten free, vegan, fat free. 
It's like, look at the back. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's gluten free. It's nothing to do with sugar. It's to do with a protein enzyme that some people just have a, a like an autoimmune disease to it. Gluten free doesn't matter. Like you said, it's like, hey, gluten free vegan, uh, whole thirty. <laughs> <laughs> 75 hard approved. Yeah. Like you look in the bag, it's like 17 grams of sugar, 30 grams of carbohydrates. Like, holy shit. Yeah. It's just the insulin spike. It's the glycemic index. That's the culprit. That's the problem. High refined carbohydrates is the major culprit, but those sneaky sons of bitches are out there confusing you with all these buzzwords that the health granola community has decided. Besides granola is fucking terrible for you too, by the way. Yep. How do you keep it all together? It's like, well, I bind the oats with agave <laughs> nectar. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> with raisins and cranberries. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my yeah. God, these are clusters of just like chronic disease clusters presented by granola people. <laughs> whole earth approved. That's the whole point. That's, that's, the, that's the trick out there. And that's why this article is so great. There's no bullshit in here. It's just like, these will spike your blood sugar. These will not. Or as much or as little. Right. But there's still varying degrees on both sides. But just to give you guys an education, it's not about being perfect. It's just about doing better. It's about having the knowledge so that you you control what's going in and what your body is going to do. It, you can eat what, You can eat cake and ice cream. Man, like... If it's your birthday, fucking go for it. Yes. But you have to understand what it's going to do. It's just the same. It's the exact same thing as if, hey, you know what? I'm going to go out tonight and we're going to be drinking. All right. I'm probably going to be shit tomorrow. I'm taking on the responsibility of that. Not like, well, the package said it was fine, so I should yeah. be okay. And you just blindly walk around with no knowledge. It's the idea of having the knowledge. There are going to be some things that are better than other things. And yeah. where are you on that spectrum? If, the, if what you eat is on the bad side then guess what? You're going to have to, you have to deal with those, the, 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 the effects of that. That's just how it goes. Yash is right. 80% is great. And how do you get there? Let's just break it down say you, uh, for simplification purposes, you eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if we just did 80%, the number of Cheat meals. I know someone's like, don't say cheat meals. It makes you feel like I'm not fuck cheat meals. Be an adult. It's a cheat meal. That's a good thing. <laughs> Nutrition wise. Right? So 80%, okay, of the 21 that I have, do some quick back of the napkin math. That means 16 to 17 meals I eat well. And the other five to six, I can do whatever I want. That's kind of nice. That's like two days worth of just like effing off. <laughs> All right. So let's get to the second article that we hear, have here. It's actually a one pager. Let me bring it up. Called Fast Food. Fast Food. We have Window Tab. Where are you? Oh, Windows. There it is. Now we, had, we talked about time. And how that is an illusion. What I loved about this is like it has nothing really to do with fat fast food. It has to do with the the um, the excuse of time and money. Common explanations for a bad diet is being too busy to eat right. Mm -hmm. It takes too long. I have this up here. Let me close this. Okay. Now here's what they did. They talked about. Because eating is not optional, right? You have to eat, <laughs> just like you have to breathe and drink water. It is an important question, not about how much time it takes to eat right, but whether it takes longer to eat right or eat wrong. So a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this, is I'm coming home late. I got to get home. I pick up the kids like, shit, okay, I'll just go over to Chick-fil-A and get them a quick meal because it doesn't take as much time and we're on a time crunch. And people do that all the time. They're working jobs all day, whether you're at the gym or not. It's like, oh, it's too, it's too time consuming. I can just go through the drive through and get something. And so what they did is they did an experiment. Oh, like an actual experiment. Team A was the too busy to eat right team, and they went to Dairy Queen, which is delicious, by the way. Oreo Blizzard, 
Turn it upside down. Good to go. Team B, <laughs> the not too easy to eat or busy to eat right team. They went to the local grocery store. Three, two, one, go. And the problem is, is that we are the opinion that at even the worst eatery, not the problem, the, the benefit is knowing the glycemic index part. Even if you have to go to a fast food place, you can find a better option than not. So we have the opinion that even the worst eatery that can be made better by better choices. But that is a, a, a whole other article. But that goes the, hand in hand, right? If you know what's good, you know what's bad. You can figure it like you can eat better at McDonald's. There is a way. There is a way. And that's the point. And so as we come to here is that fast food team A took them 17 minutes and 45 seconds from gym to food in hand. Team B, 14 minutes and 23 seconds from gym to food in hand. So faster, like three, two, one, go to your destination, get your food order. You get the food in your hand, right? Faster. But let's just say this was a nice, easy, like negligible difference. Even if the fast food was three minutes faster, you have three more minutes in your day to do something like this. Like for me to walk through the grocery store, get what I want and get out. It does not take a long time at all. Like whether you're in a punch, a crunch, like a walk in a Whole Foods, I grab two apples, Honey Crisp. It's the only good apple out there. I know Bill's a green apple guy. Yep. <laughs> Granny, Granny Smith. Granny Gotta Smith or Honey mm -hmm. Crisp. I walk over, I grab a perfect food bar, and then I walk around and I grab like a deli lunch meat pack, and then I walk out. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Instead of sitting in a drive through Now the red part here says fast food or the Dairy Queen. They got a double cheeseburger, large fries, and a chocolate shake. Now, I don't think it's 620 anymore. This is 20 years ago, right? Right, right. Grocery <laughs> store, six ounces of turkey breast from the deli counter, two Fuji apples. Oh, wow, I forgot about that. <laughs> That's weird that I said that. Two Fuji apples and one ounce of roasted cashews, 539. Cheaper, faster, 100,000 times healthier. Eric, did you just say Honeycrisp yuck? <laughs> I've I've never kicked anyone out of this chat. Dude, you're you flirting with it, sir. You, you like there's there's two completely different conversations going on right now. <laughs> Your lecture and then the things that are going on over here. It's just, wow, man. You guys are great. But here's the idea. <laughs> Fast food, right? The idea that we don't have enough time to eat healthy or eating healthy costs a lot. It is a myth. It is a myth. Now, I realize if I went to McDonald's and got the number three for $3 every day, probably be cheaper than me going to the grocery store and buying a lot of healthy foods. Sure. But what is the cost of that in the long run? What is the cost of that on the effects of your health and longevity a year, five years for the rest of your life? If that's the option that you wanted. It's not a time element. Shit, these days you can order on Amazon and have it delivered to your doorstep. It's not a time problem anymore. Now that is true. The more there's more money, but the time you saved is worth the money that you spent. Yeah, I think that that's that's the convenience part is is what always gets kind of thrown in here. And there was some discussion that we had actually in the chat about fast food generally being cheaper. And if you're comparing, and what I said in the chat was, if you're comparing McDonald's to me going to a nice restaurant i'm gonna get a nice steak i'll get some vegetables or whatever or if i go to mcdonald's i'm gonna get two quarter pounders with cheese and yeah that will be cheaper um the setup for that is one they're they're operating it just i mean high volume so you yeah. don't know what it is that you're getting the workmanship is not the same so there's different there's a different setup there um but generally the way that McDonald's, a place like a McDonald's is going to work is they want, they have it on every single corner for a reason. And the prices are down because they just want to pump it out. And if it's cheap and people don't have a lot of money to go out and buy, you know, if they look at the high organic, whatever, yes, it usually has a higher dollar right, amount right. on it. Um, so if you compare very high end to very low end, yeah, there's going to be a, a, a price discrepancy. But again, there's a gradient in between there. So that's what I thought was great that even when Greg did this way back in the day of go get a packet of meat, go grab an apple, go grab some, some nuts. Okay, so I have all of the things I needed. No, it doesn't look – it's not this – you know, stacked, really pretty-looking sandwich that has all <laughs> right. the condiments and all the things. But you get the job done. Mm -hmm. And 
that was that fell into the the role of what we were doing is it doesn't have to be this big lavish setup you get the pieces you need to do what you need to do on the nutrition side you get the yes. pieces you need to do the things that you need to do on the fitness side yes. and then you and then you are the one that gets to, to live healthier for a lot longer that was the deal this isn't about the prettiest meal it's like how can i get it done so that i can stop having excuses about why i can't eat better yes why is it better for me to go to mcdonald's when i can go right next door to the store and that's, this is not to say that deli meat is the best meat out there on the market or out right. there you can be putting into your body but it's going to be better than the mcdonald's <sighs> cheeseburger yes Yes. So like, you know, that's, that's the scale. That's that range that you always have to be aware of and look at. Yes. So. And the, and what you're talking about with what Greg was saying is like, there's always a better option before we close out. We'll leave you guys with this. As far as how to approach this, we have the regimen of eat meats, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Some fart, some, <laughs> some farts. fruit. Yeah. That's some if fruit, you drink, that's if you starch. Do. That's if you drink all the all yeah. the milk you were drinking. Yeah. Some fruit, little starch, no sugar, no added sugar. Fruit, go for it. You take that and you think of this prescription of good, better, and best. There's a best option. There's a perfect scenario. But there's also a better option than, say, the McDonald's thing. There's always a better option. There's a better way to do the McDonald's thing if you have to. Yeah. And there's always a good option. Good, better, best. That's it. Keep it tiered like that under the blanket of that nutritional prescription. And then to make it even more simple, as every meal should have protein, carb, fat. <laughs> Done. And a lot of the questions are portions. So here's the easiest way. My protein portion should be the size of my fist. My fat for portion should be in the palm of my hand. And my carb portion should be two fistfuls. That's it. Now, that's a generality but if you guys are unsure and you walk into the grocery store you turn right or left depending on which way it is stay on the outside you'll get there eventually and you walk over and you grab your two granny smiths you walk to the the you know the free roaming nut section and maybe like you just put a little scoopful like don't reach into your hands right i know you'll get a handful but like that's probably frowned upon half scoop bowl throw in a bag or find some things go to a get a perfect bar Grab that, and then as Bill is saying, is like go through the prepackaged lunch meal and just grab a thing of turkey. Walk out. I'll pay for it. Pay for it, <laughs> and then walk out. But that's it. <laughs> it's that easy. It really is that easy, and it takes zero time. It takes the amount of same time to go through a drive-through to do that. But the benefits that you will have off of that simplicity, and then you start creating these simple habits. Yeah, it might be weird to figure it out in your grocery store, but now that I got five grocery stores around me that I know I can drive in and be out of there in less than 10 minutes and just be on my way. On my way. Fistful of meat or protein, handful of fat, two fistfuls of carbs. Easy. Easy. I thought you were going to say good, better, best. Of nuts right there. <laughs> yeah. So grab, I, I mean, grab, I, I, grab hand, I grab a handful of nuts. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> A fistful yeah. of nuts. <laughs> Don't jiggle them, you know? <laughs> oh, but that's it, guys. Right? And so the idea is that looking at what's on the back of the package, that's your, your indicator of good or bad. Right? Better, good, better, best. There's things that are in the bad category that will spike your blood sugar more than the – but they're still better than a candy bar. Like eat a mango, don't eat a Snickers bar. Fine. We're not saying don't do that. Just don't do it every day. Snickers bar. Right, whatever. There's always a better option. Stay into the regiment of our nutritional fitness in a hundred words, beginner, and those portions with the uh, concept of good, better, best. What? Okay, I have this option. Is there anything a little bit better? Keep it simple, and you'll be on the you will be on the fast track of a life changing decision that it you is, can that sustain is, for the rest of your life. That is something that any anytime anyone comes to me and say, "Hey, I, I really want to. I'm going to come to the gym. I want to lose some weight." That is the first and the easiest thing to do. It is like so you don't have to. It, you don't have to make it some gigantic scientific thing. You can just say, "Here's where you go. Grab these things. Better options. Makes it simple. Better. The Good, the, better, the more the more sustainable diet is going to be one that's going to be simplest for you to do and still gets the effects. Yep. So. That's it.
That's it. Well, that's awesome, guys. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Glassman Chipper, going through two articles today that both played off each other really well. I thought that was it was cool. It was a good way to navigate the nutritional landscape as opposed to, you know, the other pitfalls and <laughs> landmines, right? There's a good and bad option. Blood sugar is the the great catalyst of chronic disease. There's foods that spike it, foods that don't as much. You have the prescription of meats, vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, no sugar. You have your good, better, best option and outlook, and we know what proportions we should be eating in. Don't even worry about weighing and measuring, all that other stuff. That's later down the road. Keep it simple. Cool. Keep it simple. All right, gang, thanks for joining us. We'll see you Thursday. That's right. I'm pretty sure we'll see you Thursday. We may have a special guest. Oh, yeah. We may have a special guest. Here's the topic. We would love you guys to bring a list with you. The top four, because this will be a Rush Moments episode, the top four movements that should never be programmed in online qualifiers ever again. Who is our special guest? Maybe someone who's been very vocal <laughs> this year in that category. Who knows? Who knows? But we do know. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you guys Thursday. Bye, guys.